I'm glad you've joined us on the interview. You may not realize it yet, but your life is about to change. Hi, I'm Dr. Rick Wodge, and I'm glad that you've joined us on the interview. I have a dear friend. She's been in the studio many times, and she is producing a brand new series just for you on ITVN. Her name is Dr. Dina Dye. Hello, Rick. Hello, Dr. <laughs> Dina Dye. Call me DQ. DQ. Dr. Dina Dye. You know, DQ <laughs> yeah. is the stop sign, the official stop sign in Texas. Okay. Dairy Queen. <laughs> Every time you see a dairy stop, queen, you stop. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are in beautiful Texas, and you are filming. Let's talk about your new series. Okay, yes. I just uh, filmed 10 programs. I'm brain dead, but that's okay. <laughs> so it's called The Kingdom and John's Gospel. Okay. And what it is, it's basically building off the foundation I laid in the series I did called In the Beginning. Yes. So I would really enc encourage the viewers to watch that one first because it will really help as we go through the book of John. I think we've sort of lost the concept of Yeshua as king, presently, Jesus, king, sitting, ruling, and reigning, and the language of kingdom. And when I went back to, to revisit the Gospel of John, I was just amazed at all the language in there that has to do with kingship. I think we just don't even see it mm -hmm. because we look at everything from our modern mind. Right. And we don't have kings. No, we're not used to monarchs, etc. Well, I grew up in Canada, so we do have a little bit of okay. a And if we were in England, that yeah. would be a little bit closer stretch. Somewhat, but yeah. Here it's just huge. Yeah. The culture, the time frame, the languages, the idioms. The, so how much of that do you get into? Quite a bit, actually, uh, especially idioms and metaphors related to the temple, because after all, the temple is a palace where the king sat to rule from. The temple is, as far as I'm concerned, everything. Uh, if we are really going to understand the Bible, we've got to understand the temple, which is the place of God's presence. He is king. That's where he is seated. Uh, and so I go into a, a lot of the, the idioms related to the temple and in particular idioms related to what it means to be a king, titles and things like that. So there's a lot of that. Now, this is your third series with it ITV. Is, yes. You did in the beginning. Yes. You did Days the, of the Bones. Days of the Bones. And and now the Kingdom in John's Gospel. Okay. So we're looking forward to seeing that. It's supposed to be produced and out there for viewing pleasure by the end of the year. Yeah. So. Well, uh, I think this is really going, I mean, hopefully. I, I, there's a few things. I, I'm a little outside the box, you know, when I teach. But I'm really trying to shake people out of their preconceived ideas. Basically, a lot of what we think about Christianity is just from really recent, the last 300 years, mm -hmm. the, the uh, age of reason and enlightenment is a lot of where our thinking is. So it's very hard for us to get back to how did the ancients view things, you know, the ancient world. I think it's important. For us, a lot of things are relative. Yeah. Which doesn't really work for a proper interpretation of the scriptures because it's very concrete language. Yes. With it's a, very a different concrete, language. With a very concrete culture. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes what we have, the Bible will talk in language that's sort of metaphorical and it you know, creates imagery and, and symbolism, but it always had a concrete meaning. So for us today, we have a tendency to just start with the concrete and stay with the concrete. We're very literal. That's how we approach things. We're very scientific. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem when you look at books, say, like the book of Revelation or Ezekiel or whatever. You cannot approach that book in a literal sense at all, or you're going to end up in some very weird places. Right. Yeah. Right. So... In 10 parts, I believe, is yes. what this series yeah, is. Jump 10. Is this reflective of what you've been writing, or is this completely outside of that? Well, nothing. I, everything bounces off. So, I, you know, whatever I record, whatever I'm studying, whatever I'm writing, they all kind of work together. So I'm just finishing up my second book, The Temple Revealed in the Garden. So there, I'm making points about the garden, about ruler, <clears throat> excuse me, rulership in the garden, mm -hmm. Adam serving as king and priest. So that kind of language we're going to find in this series. Like, I just can't do things separate 
one from another. So my first book, The Temple Revealed in Creation, uh, also comes to play in this series because we have to lay the groundwork. So I, I submit that Gen uh, John chapter 1 is actually in the pattern of Genesis chapter 1. So I spend quite a bit of time laying out that foundation so people can see. So the language in Genesis 1 is the language we have in John 1. I love it. How well has your first book done? Well, all things considered, I'm not a New York Times bestseller, but uh, overall, I mean, I haven't heard anything negative, which hopefully anyone who has anything negative won't say anything, <laughs> but uh, I've, I've, I think I've done reasonably well. Uh, it continues to sell. It's on Amazon, mm -hmm. and I'm always amazed, you know, each month, you know, people are buying the book. So it's not like you publish a book and then that's it. You're done. No one ever buys it again. Right. And then uh, probably what I'll do the closer I get to the, uh, as the second one is published is that I'll release it you know have like a free weekend and just you know you can do a download and, and then you can get a copy mm -hmm. that way because I want to encourage people to read them in order if they can yeah. uh, it, it would be helpful but uh, <laughs> it doesn't always work I know and they're very extensive works you know I've yeah. noticed that on ITVN uh, you're always within the top three shows. Cool. <laughs> and, so I, and I think part of that is that people want to go deeper. Yeah. They want to look at things from a, uh, a truer perspective, more authentic perspective. And they know that there's more to the scriptures than just a surface level exactly. um, examination. Of it. Well, and I try to be a bridge between the scholarly world and the folks. Because typically when you read scholarly work half the time i you know what are they saying their sentences are four miles long mm -hmm. you know you can't so i'm trying to take that material because i always we have excellent scholars there's just great yes. work out there but they don't write in a way that your average person is going to read the book so i feel like i'm a bridge between mm -hmm. those two worlds mm -hmm. to help take that material and and bring it to a place where the, you know your average christian reading the book can understand it how many books were involved in your research when you're oh. dealing? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I started writing The Garden, uh, I thought, eh, you know, how hard can this be? How much material could there possibly be on the garden as a temple pattern? And Adam in the garden, you know, serving as king and priest, I thought, nobody's actually done that. And then, when, I mean, I probably bought 100 books. I was wow. stunned by the amount of material out there on that topic. I mean, many scholars understand that. It's just such a shame that just people aren't, you know, connecting to that. Dina, I'm fairly well read. I've never seen any, any material. Yes, yeah, there's a lot out there. So, again, I took advantage of those scholars and I, you know, read pretty much everything and tried to, how can I present this in a way that makes sense to just, you know, regular folks who don't have time to, you know, spend eight hours a day researching and writing, etc. I want to do this a couple times during our interview. So tell folks how they can find your materials. Okay, so uh, the best way is my website, Foundations in Torah. It is a membership website, but there's free and there's whatever you would like to commit okay. to, be a partner with me. All my material is on the website, and that includes my books as a download. So if you uh, purchase the monthly membership, you have access to everything. I probably have about 400 30-minute DVDs, really, that's all. tons of material. <laughs> I have a study book, workbook, and then the Temple Revealed in Creation is right there. You can just click on it and, okay. and download that. So that's the best place. Now you can go to Amazon. Mm -hmm. You can download, uh, you can get a Kindle version of the book, and also it's in paperback. Mm -hmm. And so the new book, hopefully out uh, early part of 2018, it will also be on Amazon and it will be on my website. You can purchase my materials as DVDs or you can download them. I have a video on demand section on my Love website it. as well. So Great. you can rent or purchase the, the download, whatever you, I've tried to find many different ways and and I'm on Roku. So I have right. a Roku channel, right. Foundations in Torah, and uh, currently all the material on that Roku channel is free. Great. Yeah. Great. 
So it's important, I want to address you personally just for a moment. It's important to, you know, if you like Dina's material, Dr. Dye's material, to support that effort in her writings, on the website, whatever you can do. It helps offset her costs for even just driving out to produce more uh, weekly shows for you. Um, and so, you know, ITVN doesn't charge our teachers for airing their production. We just, we don't do that. That's not our model. Um, so Dina doesn't have to pay us to be on, but she still has to pay for production time and, and everything that she's got to do on her end of things. So it's great to be able to give to help yeah. Dina yeah. so that it offsets hotel costs, well, driving costs, and all that. You know, I'm a one-man so, band here. I don't yeah. have any help. I don't have staff. So I, you know, I have to do everything. And you know how long it takes just to do certain right. tasks. Right. I mean, right. you can drop into the hole of the internet and social media and never come up for air and get right. anything done. So right. you have to be very uh, cognizant of your time. But really, there's a lot in, in any ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, there just are a lot of experiences. Expenses. And my goal is to get the material out as best I can, mm -hmm. free right. in as many places. Not everything can be free, right. but, uh, right. you know. Because you like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't like to pay the bills, just like everybody. You don't like sleeping underneath an overpass? Uh, no, haven't had to do that yet. <laughs> Although when I was a hippie, but we won't go there. <laughs> but but I, I know you and your husband, you guys are very uh, minimalistic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're not put on the dog, as they say. You don't drive limousines, none of those kind of things. You're very conservative. This is a conservative movement. Right. And I think when you're on the inside of the movement, you feel like, wow, it's really getting big. It's huge. But when you look at it, it's a sliver. Yeah, it's, it's a, a small sliver pond. Yeah. of Christianity, yeah. a sliver of Messianic Judaism. Yeah. It's just a sliver. And even though ITVN is around the world, we're a sliver of the viewership of Christian TV, if right. you will. Yeah. And so it's important to well, and my hope to put, invest money back into yeah. this uh, genre. Amen. Yeah, no, I, it is. Um, I. I have a great love, Christianity, Judaism, trying to see, mm -hmm. you know, build a bridge between the two, the Messianic Jewish world. And I've spent 35, well, 38 years now trying to show the, the undercurrent of the Hebrew culture at the first century, ancient cultures. I love history and trying to tie it all together to help folks understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And what I always say, too, it, it's not that you can't just read the scriptures and that the word washes over you and it brings healing and deliverance. I'm not saying that, but right. there is a place to understand the context. Right. And what I say is once you do that, then you can make a practical application for today because it doesn't do any good to teach and not make a, a, an application for our lives. And it needs to be a true application right. based upon the true context. Let's take one for example, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. That's in the Gospels. Let's look at the Christian, typical Christian interpretation of that. Um, I forget. <laughs> Because you've been looking. <laughs> you might have to take that one. Okay, so this wasn't prompted, of course, before we aired. Uh, okay, so the typical perspective on that is that this is about prayer and that Jesus, Yeshua, will be a part of that time of prayer. And, and I'm yeah. sure that he is. That's not the context. No, not at all. Okay, so what is the context? Well, whenever you're talking about being in the midst of, this is temple language. Because the purpose of building a house is so that God's presence will dwell in the house. And so that house is in the midst of his people. So if we go out into the wilderness to the tabernacle, and of course the tabernacle was in the midst of the folks, the, the tribes all around, uh, three, four, three on each side, four sides, mm -hmm. and God's presence was in the inner sanctum. So anytime you see language in the midst of my people, then you're talking about the temple structure, the mm -hmm. government of ancient right. Israel, all of those things. So it just goes right. way beyond, sure. you know, Jesus is here, not that he isn't, but you, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's greater. Than and then very concrete, uh, literal uh, meaning of that in that context in the first century would be you had three rabbis that would be in a congregation making determinations on, you know, he stole my chicken, yeah, he, right. you know, whatever that was, yeah, yeah. right? Rulings a couple of days on a week. the Torah, Rulings yeah. on the Torah. Yeah. So 
it's it's very much sounding like he will be that third rabbi to make that decision so that you have the witnesses there to make the determination. Because right. if you have one person, you have three different opinions. <laughs> it's always a Jewish thing, you know. So, but but it has yeah. nothing at all to do with prayer. That's that's the point. But you so. know, we don't even really understand prayer. You know, it's the service of the priest. It goes far beyond just verbalizing. Uh, and not that we shouldn't, but right. praying for somebody. But it is a whole ceremonial thing, mm -hmm. and and that they would. It was related to the altar that when they approached the altar in the morning and evening, basically what happened in the synagogue is the prayers became a substitute for the action of the priest at the mm. altar. Mm. So, you know, the more you dive into scripture, I, you know, the deeper it is. Uh, it is a deep well, a never ending well. And honestly, the more I study, the more I realize I really don't know a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I understand that helplessness because it's just, it, it's so deep, it's never ending, and it's a well that'll never run dry. Right, right. Yeah. Well, as we film this, we've just started showing in the beginning. Okay. And so we're going through that first series. Now, my guess is that ITVN will begin to uh, air your third season, this brand new show you just filmed as of today. Okay, uh, yeah. That that'll it will be, be it'll be airing. Well, that'll be perfect. So for so. anyone watching in the beginning, it's really, because I'm going to repeat some, mm -hmm. you, basically, you could probably narrow the Bible down to a couple of sentences. So you actually end up repeating concepts. But honestly, it's important to repeat them over and over again so people mm -hmm. begin to see it and begin to look at it in a new way. That That's really my hope. And that they can draw on the material and that it, it will apply in some way to their life and make sense. You know, I think, again, I think we've forgotten that Yeshua truly is. It, it, he's been crowned king in an official enthronement ceremony, if you will, in the book of John. But we don't recognize enthronement coronation language, so we just kind of forget about it. But it's very important. Well, Dina, you're Jewish. You were raised in a Jewish home. And isn't repetition Jewish? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know you're all Jewish when you got kids. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the Torah, when you go in, when yeah, you go out, yeah. when you're along the way, yeah. when you're, you know, that's you repetition. Forget. Well, and it's one, I mean, this, the, the festivals are set up the, the same way. I mean, the, just the, the prayers are approaching the altar. I mean, you're doing the same thing right. morning, noon, and night, every day. Yes. You know, it's kind of like Groundhog Day, but you just keep doing it over. So everything's essentially a rehearsal for the kingdom. So There's you're ready. Cycles every month, yeah, cycle yeah. every year, yeah. every seven years, every you know. So we've got these repeating repetition. It's uh, it's almost like we're saying God is smarter than us, and He's trying to teach us. Do you Imagine. think? Imagine. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and it's hard too because we, uh, you know, modern America, we don't think in cycles and patterns. Mm -hmm. Some people it's have. Very linear. Yes, we are. We did this, now we're done, let's move on to something else. Well, it's the same thing happens when, when we think of the context of the temple. So typically we've looked in a book, you know, we see a picture, you know, flat, uh, two-dimensional, and it's a, it's a horizontal view of the temple. You're in the outer court, you mm -hmm. moved into the temple area, the, the porch, into the holy place, into the holy of holies. And that, so we, but actually the thinking of the temple is in a, a, a vertical realm. So we don't think vertically about a house. So uh, this, I talk about this in the series, mountains in the scripture were temples because the top of the mountain would be the Holy of Holies. Think about Moses entering into the top of the mountain, into the cloud. And then down, halfway down, remember we had the elders and the, the, the rulers of the, uh, the congregation? That was considered to be the holy place represented by the garden. And then at the foot of the mountain is the outer courts where the people were. So it was a vertical thing because everything in the temple was about connecting heaven to earth. And I'm thinking about Jacob's ladder. Exactly. That's a I mean, classic that's, example. And, you know. Also, and then the, the term in uh, the Gospels where Yeshua is talking, he says, you'll see the angels right. of God descending and descending. To yeah. me, that is very picturesque of Jacob's life. Yeah, yeah. No, because in the, you had multiple uh, elements that represented the connecting point between heaven and earth. Certainly, certainly had temples, but trees and vines and stalks and pillars and columns and stairways and ramps and altars all had that same purpose. 
to connect the two spheres because currently they're separated. Mm -hmm. So it was to bring them together. Ultimately, that's what Yeshua did in his body. Everything that he did is very much in the style of the ancient world. And so we want to try to bring that, uh, bring that to light. What you just said, at least the way you phrase that, tells me that when we try to um, modernize the message with amplified translations, with making it fit our current situations, to the extreme, we lose the message. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, obviously not everyone's going to learn Hebrew um, and not everyone's going to learn Greek. Like, I don't really know Greek that well. <laughs> I'm always looking in the Septuagint to find out what the Hebrew is for the Greek because I'll yes. understand the concept That's better. the land bridge between mm -hmm. the two. But you would be amazed. So here's, here's a good example. Uh, so we see Yeshua's disciples and what does he say? Follow me. Okay, sounds good. But if you go look back in the Hebrew context, it actually means, come be my attendant. Mm. So now we're back to king language. It's not just follow me while I travel through Israel. It's come be my attendant in terms of the, of the kingship, in terms of the court language. Like, that's very different. And so do you find that phrase there, or those types of phrases in the other writings, the um, extra biblical writings of the time period, for example, in the Talmud, those kind of things. Um, Midrash. You know, I actually have not looked in the Talmud for that particular expression. I was simply, you know, evaluating the, the language and the word in Greek and Hebrew to see. Oh, it's literal meaning. Yeah, I, I haven't really followed out, you know. Um, I don't, a lot of the, the, the Talmud isn't real, since they don't believe Yeshua is a Messiah, yes. you know. yeah then we're, we're kind of missing that sort of language. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to do something different, you know, not mm -hmm. be lock, in lockstep with the rabbis, but I'm trying to move out of that realm. Also, where we're locked in in Christianity, again, it's so influenced by the last 300 years, into, into a different mindset. I just think it, we have got to get back to kingdom concepts because, as I said, the kingdom is here now present. What I say, it's invisible. We can't, we don't see it. We do see it every time kingdom principles are made manifest. Someone, you know, saves a baby or, you know, feeds the poor or whatever. Those are manifestations of the kingdom. And when those things are done, the kingdom becomes visible. Yes. See, so it's not like it's not here and it is on the earth and it is moving it all by moving slowly but it is moving in love and because we're responding to the king of exactly that and we are supposed to serve as kings and priests extending and expanding the mm -hmm. kingdom to the four corners so that it can be seen mm -hmm. the only way the kingdom is seen through those who are his kings and priests serving and walking according to his command mm -hmm. when people see that then they see the kingdom. So when we are unkind and, you know, do hurtful things and don't repent and we don't walk in forgiveness, you know, the kingdom is not visible. Right. And I think what you just said is uh, a very good reason, a huge reason of why so many didn't see Yeshua as being the king of Israel at the time. Because the whole world wasn't instantaneously transformed. Right, right. The Jewish people were still under the bondage and the rule of the Romans. Right. Uh, it's not that kind of kingdom no. at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's a kingdom of love and loyalty. Now, what about when Messiah shows himself to the world? Do you think that will be a radically different approach? The first time as believers, we would say he came for a different purpose. Uh, that it was a different type of kingdom he was setting up. What about when we see the Messiah come to reign in Israel? Yeah. Do you think it'll be the same or very different? You know, I mean, it's kind of outside my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> but my sense is, as I understand the scriptures, where we where we are now is the temple exists, it, the temple represented going up to heaven. So the temple was kind of this sac sacred space that existed between heaven and earth. So when you went up to the temple, it was as though you were entering into heaven. But it was the place where heaven and earth met. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, that when Yeshua returns, like, you know, this is my visual, he's 
seated in the heavenly realms, seated, seated at the right hand of the Father, seated being king. But he exists in the world outside of time. And we are in the world inside of time. The temple was supposed to be the place where the world outside of time and the world inside of time met. So when that barrier between right. these two worlds is removed, and I have no idea how that looks or how that happens, when the heavens and the earth are restored and heaven essentially comes down to the earth, because the earth is our home where right. we're supposed to serve, when that barrier, that, you know, the firmament, the portal, the curtains, whatever on earth you want to call it, somehow when that is removed, all things will be restored and he will sit on the throne, you know, on earth. But I've not been there, and I don't know how that works, <laughs> and I'd be the last person. To... I wish we had more time, because we're getting down to the wire yeah. here, but when we talk about Earth and our home, there's a huge misnomer that, you know, we're going to be in the sweet by and by and gone, right. and that is just it not the way. It all has to go back to the garden is yes. the pattern. Right. Adam served in the garden. The garden was essentially earth. Adam served there as a king and priest. And so everything is restored right. to the garden. Because the prayer of Jesus, Yeshua, is to bring heaven down. Correct. And even in the Revelation, the imagery there is, is the, heaven yeah. coming down. The, yeah. you know, the, New Jerusalem, the temple coming down. New Jerusalem and the temple were synonymous terms yes. and is seen as a bride. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that's, that, that's what it's all about. And so right. we do need to get out of that mindset of mm -hmm. we're going to fly out of here and leave the earth to crumble and be destroyed. Our job is to restore it. So no matter what how popular your name is and how many volumes you've written about being taken away in a rapture, uh, no matter how popular that is, no matter how many millions of volumes it sells, it doesn't make it true. No, and really, I think, if you think about it, to just escape and leave the earth to go to hell in a handbasket, where is the mercy and compassion for all those who don't know who the king is? Our job is to bring them to the king and help them enter into the covenant with the king. So if we're out of here, and we're, we, it's like we have no compassion for the people that are here and struggling and suffering. It, it doesn't line up with the master right. of who he is. Yeah. It doesn't line up with God's redemptive plan for mankind. It just doesn't line up. No, and all kings, uh, a good king was a benevolent king who exercised perfect justice, perfect righteousness to bring prosperity and blessing to the empire in which he ruled over. Dr. Dina Dye, it's always good to have you here on the set and in beautiful Texas. You're going to love her new series. The Kingdom in John's Gospel, and it is coming to an ITVN channel near you. Amen. Don't miss it. Thank you, brother. Thank you again. Right. We'll see you next time. Shalom, shalom.